Hi, this is Santu Sahu. Welcome once again to my YouTube channel Sahu's Tutorial. In this YouTube video, I will discuss some multiple choice question on English literature. As I have earlier mentioned that I am conducting 500 MCQ series for West Bengal state examination and this is the second video of this series. Earlier, I have discussed 35 questions and in this video, I will discuss another 30 to 40 questions. So without wasting any time, let's begin the video. So here is the first question on your screen, question number 36. Okay, now you will have to arrange, arrange the five parts of the wasteland in chronological order. What the thunder said, death by water, a game of chase, the fire sermon, and burial of the dead. So there are five parts of the wasteland. So you'll have to arrange it. Now the first part here, the option E C D A E C D V A A C E D V E C A B D C D E A B. So you know that that burial of the dead is the first part, and then we have a game of chess number two. Then we have the fire. After fire comes the water. Because aakko bujane ke liye water lagta hai. So that is four. Pehle fire, uske baad water. And the last one is where the thunder set. So this is so one. That is E. E comes first. Then C. Then D. Then B. Then A. So E C D V A. Where is E C D? E C D V A. So the right option is question number uh, option number one. So first one burial of the day, then game of chess, then the fire of the fire sermon, then death by water, and what the thunder set. Okay. But uh, before going to uh, another question, I'll have to say that that the wasteland has some famous phrase like April is the cruelest month. April is the cruelest month and T.S. Eliot has used the, the Sanskrit mantra that is Santi Santi thrice. The word Santi that is Santi 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 he has used the word thrice and the another famous line that is I will show you fear in a handful of dust. I will show you in fear in a handful of dust appears in this poem. That is the wasteland. And April is the cruelest month. Whereas Geoffrey Chaucer, whereas Geoffrey Chaucer in his prologue to the uh, in his prologue to the uh, general prologue to the Canterbury Tales, he mentions or he refers April as the as the as the sweetest month as the sweetest month of the year but in this case we will see that T.S. Eliot has mentioned April or referred April as the cruelest month so you can see the difference of Geoffrey Chaucer's general product the Canterbury Tales and T.S. Eliot's the wasteland so these are three things you have to uh, remember Okay, now move to the next slide. In T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland, to whom is the dedication written? So, to whom did T.S. Eliot dedicate his famous The Wasteland? And in, fit, uh, in what language is it written? And what does the dedication mean? So, options are Age of Pound, Virginia Woolf, Emily Dickinson, Walt Whitman. So, the right answer is here. Ezra Pound is the right answer. So, he dedicated his fellow poet that is Ezra Pound. Hmm. And now, um, uh, it was written in Italian vernacular language and the dedication mean that is the greater craftsman. Il Miglior Fabrio. That is the greater craftsman. Okay. Let's move to the next slide here. You will see here that he dedicated he dedicated the wasteland to a fellow poet named Ezra Pound. 
and the words of the dedications are for Ezra Pound Il Miglior Fabro that is for Ezra Pound the greater craftsman the greater craftsman and this dedication is in vernacular or local Italian language vernacular language is generally translated as so for Ezra Pound the greater craftsman so he dedicated this to Ezra Pound it was written in Italian vernacular language and it means the greater craftsman that is Il Miglior Fabro okay now Don Juan Don Juan it is a myth Don Juan written by it's a poem by Lord Byron each uh, each specimen of each a specimen of a heroic play is an example of what heroic play epic satire epic narrative romantic poem so Don Juan you know it very easy that Don Juan is an epic satire so option number B is the right answer here epic satire so Don Juan here unlike the uh, original one he is being seduced by the womanizer he is being seduced by the woman hmm. so let's have a look in this slide here hmm. Don Juan uh, by, by Byron Don Juan by Byron is a satirical epic poem that portrays the Spanish legend of Don Juan but it is different not as a womanizer originally Don Juan was a womanizer he used to seduce women but in this case by in Byron's Don Juan was not that kind of rather Byron's Don Juan is being seduced by women Byron's Don Juan is being seduced easily by women so as a genre literature Don Juan is an epic poem that is satirical or satire uh, epic, epic poem and it was written in Otava Rima or Otava Rhyme Otava Rima consists of 8 iambic pentameter 8 iambic pentameter 8 iambic pentameter and its rhyming scheme each a b a b a b c c that you have a diambic pentameter a b a b a b a a b a b a b c c that is the otavarima's rhyming scheme at his death in 1824 lord byron had written 16 of 17 cantos so he had completed 16 cantos but the last one that is the 17 one was unfinished it went unfinished so 17 one he did not complete that it was unfinished so he completed only 16 cantos okay now move to the next next question to whom did byron dedicate don juan to whom did byron dedicate don juan so t.s Eliot, coldridge wordsworth robert sadi so options are here please keep answering in the comment box if you like the video please subscribe my channel and stay tuned with sahu's tutorial because more videos are coming soon okay so the answer of this question is that is to robert sadi so byron dedicated don juan to robert sadi okay you know that coldridge wordsworth and robert sadi they make what they make lake school of poetry lake school of poetry lake school of poetry coldridge wordsworth and sadi they belong to lake school of poetry okay now move to question number 40 who is the speaker of this line a thought to don a thought to don was an experience it modified his sensibility a thought to don was an experience it modified his sensibility so the options are here a for levis t s Eliot, samuel johnson i richards so here the right answer is t s Eliot. T.S. Eliot now here he is uh, commenting on Dunn and he is talking about dissociation of sensibility dissociation dissociation of sensibility of sensibility the famous theory that is dissociation of sensibility was commenting on John Dunn and he was giving providing the theory that is dissociation of sensibility in his the famous the metaphysical poets the metaphysical poets 
metaphysical fluids. So here the right option is T. S. Eliot. Okay. Now move to question number forty-one. John Lilly, one of the university wits, became instantly famous with the publication of what text or which text? Ninety-five Thesis, Utopia, Ephesus, or the Anatomy of Wit. It is very easy. That John Lilly is uh, John Lilly became instantly famous. With the publication Euphues or the its subtitle is the Anatomy of Wit. So the option number C is the right answer here. Okay, now move to quiz. Uh, the term university, you know, the term university which was coined by whom? It was coined by George Sainsbury, a 19th century journalist and author. The term university which was not used in their lifetime, but it was coined. Bad me, con kia? It was coined by George Sainsbury. So the university wits is a phrase used to name a group of late 16th century English playwrights and a pamphleters who were educated at the universities of Oxford or Cambridge and who became popular secular writers. Popular secular writers. Okay. So they have studied at Oxford, either at Oxford or in uh, in Cambridge. Okay. So so there there were total. Uh, mainly there are total six people and sometimes Thomas Kidd is also considered as university wits. So there are the acronym you can remember by GNM. So by GNM you can remember GNM. GNM is a nursing. So you can by this short thing G, G for Thom G for Robert Green here. Look at here that is Robert Green. Green so G, uh, Robert Green. Okay here GNM Thomas S M for Marlow. So GNM that is one is G for Robert Green, N for Thomas Ness, Christopher Marlowe, and M. So Marlowe for M. So G and M, they were from Cambridge. So Robert Green, Thomas Ness were from Cambridge, and from Oxford there were Lily, Laws, and Pili. So there is this uh, very humorous uh, short thing uh, that is acronym the Lily Laws me Pili. Lily ne Laws me ja ke Pili. So Lily, that is John Lily. Or loss that is Thomas loss or Pili that is George Pill. So these three were from the University of Oxford, and other three were that is Robert Green and Thomas Ness and Christopher Marlowe. They were from Cambridge University, and sometimes Thomas Kidd also. They he has not studied either. Uh, he has not studied at Cambridge or Oxford. Okay, uh, but sometimes Thomas Kidd is also Thomas Kidd is also considered as university wish. So these three, uh, these seven were called university wits, and it was coined by the 19th century journalist or author George Sainsbury. Okay, so one is G N M, and another is Lily Lodge me Pili. Lily Lodge Pili. Okay. Now in the God of Small Things, in the God of Small Things, Amu's family went to see a theater. Now what is the name of the theater? The Sound of Music. The evening prayer, the dark night, the peaceful night. The sound of music, evening prayer, the dark night, the peaceful night. So the right option here is the the sound of music, the sound of music. So the option number A is the right answer. Okay. Now the next question: Who in his poem? Who in his poem? To the memory of my beloved, the author, Mr. William Shakespeare. Hmm? Printed to the memory of my beloved to the author William Shakespeare. Any dedicating this poem to William Shakespeare. Printed in six. Printed in the 1623-23 first folio. Printed in the 1623 first folio of Shakespeare. Praises him by listing Lily as one of the best playwrights whom he surpassed. Praises him by listing Lily. So he was also praising Listy as one of the best playwrights whom he surpassed. How far? So the, what was the comment? How far thou didst our Lily outshine, or sporting key the Marlowe's mighty line? So the three things are mentioned here: Marlowe's mighty line, sporting key, and how far thou didst our Lily outshine. So the option here: Ben Johnson, Samuel Johnson. Abraham Cowley, Thomas Ness. So the right answer of this question is it was none other than Ben Johnson. So Ben Johnson commented uh, in his poem that is to the memory of my beloved, the author, Mr. William Shakespeare. Okay. 
to next question the proverb the proverb all is fair in love and war all is fair in love and war has been attributed to whom has been attributed to whom marlo nas lily thomas kid the proverb all is fair in love appears in the work that is euphuse the anatomy of wit or the or the anatomy of wit that was written by whom lily so lily so lily is the right answer here so lily is the option number c is the right answer here all is fair in love and war is been attributed to john lily one of the one of the university wits which novel of rohington mystery was withdrawn from the university of mumbai's english syllabus from the university of mumbai's english syllabus which novel of mystery rohington mystery was withdrawn after complaints from maharashtrian politician aditya thakre the grandson of bal thakre okay so it's a long journey a fine balance family matters so the long journey a fine balance family matters so the right option here is such a long journey that was published in the year 1991 such a long journey is the right answer here hmm. and in a fine balance the characters like om prakash darji manak appears hmm. om prakash darji manak appears hmm. okay now let's have a look in this slide that when aditya thakre the grandson of bal thakre the final year art student of st javier's college complained to the vice uh, vc vice chancellor that the book contains abusive language about his grandfather and maharashtrian community so the long journey was withdrawn from the syllabus of mumbai university and but it won the but this work was very famous it won the governor general awards commonal writers prize for best book and w smith books in canada first novel award but it was also shortlisted for the prestigious booker prize and for the trillium award okay now the next question rape of the lock the rape of the lock by alexander pope contains how many cantos contains 2 3 4 5 you know that rape of the lock has five cantos it was published three times 1712 then 1714 Then 1717. First edition was published 1712. Then the 1714, where he dedicated uh, later, where he wrote a letter to uh, dedication, uh, dedicated a letter to Arabella Farmer. And 1717, 1717, may you will see that uh, it was added uh, the uh, the Clarissa speech was added there. So 1712, 1714, and 1717, and you will see the. famous silk machinery hmm. uh, the use of silk machinery machinery in the rape of the lock okay now the rape of the lock here it is written it's a mock heroic narrative poem alexander written by alexander pope it is a high burlesque it is first published anonymously in linton's miscellaneous poems and translations in 1712 1712 sal mein in two cantos so first in two cantos it was published in 1712 then a revised edition written by mr pope followed in 1714 as a five canto so 1712 two cantos 1714 with five cantos and uh, is six with uh, accompanied by six engravings pope boasted that this sold more than 3000 copies and in its first four days so the final form of the poem appeared in 1717 so last one appeared in 1717 With the with the addition of Clarissa's speech on good humor, so in the at the at the final edition that was published in the year seventeen hundred seventy-seven, seventeen hundred seventeen, there Clarissa's speech was added, and Pope added to the second edition here. Pope added to the second edition a dedicatory letter to Mrs. Arabella Farmer, and you will see that there is the usage of silk machinery, the and it has been taken from the French Russian Korean novel Comet. Comet D. Gavalis, okay. Comet D. Gavalis, okay. And the silks were protecting Belinda from cutting the from uh, from from uh, from uh, protecting Belinda from cutting the rib of the lock. Hmm. So the, this is the usage of silk. Okay. Now we go to the question number uh, question number forty-seven. Who said this thing? Get Stuart. 
बुक्स आर अ लोट क्रॉफ बुक्स आर अ लोट क्रॉफ फिलिप लार्किन बी बेहन डिलेन थॉमस इमिली डिकेंसन ओके सो द ऑप्शन आर लार्किन बेहन डिलेन थॉमस इमिली डिकेंसन प्लीज डू राइट इन द कमेंट बॉक्स इफ यू लाइक द वीडियो प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड स्टे ट्यून विद साउथ सिटीरियल बिकॉज वीडियोस लाइक दिस ओके आर कमिंग सून आई विल अपलोड मोर वीडियोस ऑन दिस टॉपिक ओके प्लीज स्टे ट्यून विद साउथ सिटीरियल एंड शेयर विद योर फ्रेंड्स एंड डू नॉट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल सो द हेयर द राइट ऑप्शन इज हेयर दैट इज फिलिप लार्किन इज द राइट ऑप्शन हेयर हु सेट दैट गेट स्टूएट बुक्स आर अ लो क्रॉप दैट इज फिलिप लार्किन ओके Now the next question. Who is the author of Toba Tek Singh? Urdu. The author of Toba Tek Singh. Sadat Hasan Manto, Kishan Chander, Prem Chand, A K K Abbas. So here, Sadat Hasan Manto is the right answer here. Is Urdu, Urdu poet. So the author of Toba Tek Singh is Sadat Hasan Manto. Okay. Now next question. Who wrote the novel The Alchemy of Desire? Who wrote the novel The Alchemy of Desire? That was published in the year 2006. Torun Tejpal, Daisy Hasan, Aruni Kassab, and Bank uh, Banik Tan Banik uh, Tan Kakati. Ka, 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 hmm. Banikanta Kakati. Banikanta Kakati. That is Torun Tejpal. So Torun Tejpal is the right answer here. Question uh, option number A is the right answer here. Torun Tejpal wrote the alchemy of desire. Stolen sunshine. Stolen sunshine. A woman's quest for herself. A woman's quest for herself. That was 2022. Uh, it was published in the year 2022. The novel by whom? Shobha De, Amrita Pritam, Krishna Shakti, Asmita Jhabar. So the option that is option number four. That is Smita Jhabar is the right answer here. Stolen sunshine. A woman's quest for herself. It was written by Smita Jabbar. Smita Jab. Okay. Who said this line that caste is not just a division of labor? It is a division of laborers. Okay. Caste is not just a division of labor. It is a division of laborers. B. R. Ambedkar, Ozun Dangil, Babur Abagul, Bama. So it is the right option here. B. R. Ambedkar. B. R. Ambedkar is the right option. B. R. Ambedkar told that caste is not just a division of labor. Rather, it is a division of laborers. Hmm. You know that Arjun Dangil has translated the Poison Bread, the first translated anthology of uh, of 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 the literature, the Poison Bread, hmm. and Babu Rao, the Hidden Caste, Bamas Karukku, Bamas Karukku, and the I when I hid my caste, that is when I hid my caste, Babu Rao Bagul, when I hid my caste. And Bamas, that is double Karukku. Okay, now move to question number fifty-two. Who wrote the essay, "The March of the Nobel Through History"? My father's bookcase. March of the Nobel Through History, the my father's bookcase. Amit Chaudhary, Amitabh Ghosh, A. K. Ramanujan, Arun Joshi. So it was written by Amitabh Ghosh. Amitabh Ghosh. Okay. Now move to the question number fifty-three. Who wrote the novel The Adventures of Augie March? The Adventures of Augie March. That is, uh, that is, uh, it is a Bildungs Roman Roman. It is a Bildungs Roman novel. Who wrote this? Saul Bellow, Walter Pater, Patrick White, Emily Dickinson. So it is none other than the famous Saul Bellow. Saul Bellow wrote this novel, The Adventures of Augie March. Let's have a look at this slide here. The Adventures of Augie March is a Picarax novel as well as Bildung's Roman novel by Saul Bellow. It was published in the year 1953. It features the eponymous character that is Augie March, who grows up during the Great Depression, and it is an example of Bildung's Roman novel that traces the development of the protagonist from childhood to boyhood. And as a novel, this is centering on the quest for identity. So this is a novel where the character is searching for his identity. That's why this novel has been compared to the novels such diverse as the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by 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 Mark Twain, 
and then movijik as well as the catcher in the rai and the catcher in the rai was written by jd selinger okay now move to the next question the catcher the cat the, the character uh, holden caulfield the character holden caulfield appears in which novel catcher in the rai fanny and jui half 16 1924 so the holden caulfield is the protagonist of the novel that is catcher in the rye that was written by jd selinger so holden caulfield is the protagonist of the novel hmm. okay now move to the next slide here you will see that the catcher in the rye that is a novel by jd selinger published in the year 1951 the novel the novel details two days two days it details two days two days in the life of a 16 year old who is in the teen is a teenager holden caulfield after he has been expelled from prep school he has been expelled from prep school and confused and he is being uh, he is disillusioned and holden searches for truth and rails against the phonics of adult world and he ends up exhausted and emotionally unstable as who is a sensitive rebellious 16 year old caulfield is expelled from the prep school afraid to go home to his parents in new york city he spends a few days alone in manhattan so where did he spend alone in manhattan he relates his experience there in vivid and insightful prose so it is about the holden caulfield who is a 16 years old teenager hmm. he is now trying to find his identity okay the next question who wrote the novel henderson the king henderson the rain king Henderson the Rain King, J.D. Salinger, Saul Velo, Mark Twain, Henry James. So it is written none other than the the famous writer that is Saul Velo. Saul Velo wrote Henderson the Rain King, which novel of Nayantara Sagal Sahal uh, has uh, it said during the emergency period and narrates a slow erosion of values among both civil servants and people at large after independence. So reads like us. mistaken identity storm in chandigarh a time to be happy so nayantral sagals uh, reads like us that is this one was about the emergency period and narrates the slow erosion of values among both civil servants as well as the people at large after independence so reads like us uh, was published in usa in united states us reads like us and mistaken identity these two novel novels were published in usa Anyways, by Nayantara Sagal. Okay, now move to question number fifty-seven. Hukum Chand, Hukum Chand, Iqbal Singh, and Jagat Singh. Hukum Chand, Iqbal Singh, and Jagat Singh are characters in work by Raja Rao, Murtaz Anand, Arkinaran, Pushpan Singh. So Hukum Chand, Iqbal Singh, and Jagat Singh appear in the novel of Pushpan Singh. That is a train to Pakistan. A train to Pakistan. and raja rao mulk ka nam arkan nam deya tha trio deya tha trio trio of indian english literature okay now move to the next slide here that train to pakistan is a historical novel by writer the kusban singh it was published in the year 1956 and it recounts the partition of india in august 1947 through the ex perspective of the uh, that is the fictional border village that is mono majra mono majra was the fictional border village okay and it the partition of india in 1947 it recounts it was setting the setting was the background of partition of india yeah so it was written by whom it was written by kusban singh okay now uh, let's move to the next slide here a train to pakistan is a novel by kusban singh was divided into how many parts 4 6 3 5 so it has 5 it has four parts train to pakistan has There's four parts. It has four parts. Okay. The next question. The first folio. The first folio edition of Shakespeare's play. It is very easy. Sixteen was printed in sixteen 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 sixty sixteen twenty three. None of the above. So it is sixteen twenty three. The first folio of Shakespeare was printed in sixteen twenty three. Okay. Next question. Look back in anger. Look back in anger. This is how is it a kitchen sink drama? Kitchens, kitchen sink drama. 
Je kitchen sink drama set in the angry young woman. Hmm. Look back in anger. Was uh, uh, was uh, in, in look was in which year was performed? Okay. Look in which year? Look back in anger. Was performed. Okay. Hmm. In which year? In which year? Look back in anger. Was performed. Hmm. Okay, 1955, 1956, 54, 59. So, 1956 is the right answer. Look back in anger was performed in 1956. And it is a kitchen sink drama. It was set in the angry young movement, 1950s. Look at here. The look back in anger that was in 1956, the realist play written by John Osborne. It focuses on the life and the marital struggles of an intelligent and educated but disaffected young man of working class that is Jimmy Potter. So Jimmy Potter is the Jimmy Potter here is the protagonist of this novel and is equally competent yet impassive upper middle class wife that is Alison. So here is the main protagonist is here Jimmy, Jimmy Potter and his wife is Alison which upper middle class impassive upper middle class wife. The supporting characters include Cliff Lewis, who is an amiable Wales lodger. Cliff, here Cliff was trying to okay, do, uh, trying to settle everything okay, there. Uh, lodger who attempts to keep the peace in the family. Whereas Helena was opposite. Helena Charles, Alison's snobbish friend, was ruining everything. Hmm. And was uh, who was okay trying to draw the attention of Jimmy towards her. Hmm. And the play spawned the term "angry young men." To describe Osborne and those of his generation who employed the harshness of realism in the theatre, in contrast to more escapist theatre, the characterized and the previous generation, and this harsh realism has led to look back in anger being considered being considered as one of the first examples of kitchen sink drama. What is it? Is a kitchen sink drama? I have earlier mentioned that look back in anger was published in the year 1956. It was said in Angry Young Woman and it is a kitchen sink drama. Whereas Jimmy Potter is the main protagonist and his wife is Alison. And Lewis, Cliff Lewis was trying to settle the peace in the family. Whereas Alison was the snobbish friend of uh, Jimmy Potter's wife uh, who was trying to draw the attention of um, Jimmy towards her and ruining their peace in their family. So who is the movement poet here? Philip Larkin, Ted Hughes, T.S. Eliot, W. S. Warden. Okay, Larkin, Hughes, T.S. Eliot, W. S. Warden. So here the, the movement poet is Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin is the movement poet. Okay, now question number uh, the movement poet who coined the term movement. So the movement in the movement poet who coined the term movement? Philip Larkin, Kingsley Amis, J. D. Scott, D. J. N. Wright. So it is J. D. Scott. J. D. Scott coin the term the movement okay now move to the next question the movement was a term it was coined by jd scott a literary editor of the spectator to describe a group of writers including philip larkin kingsley amis donald dave elizabeth jennings dj enright john wen and robert conquest so they were movement poets who were philip larkin kingsley amis donald dave dj enright John Wayne, Elizabeth Jennings, and Robert Conquest. So they were all the movement for that was the term was coined by J. D. Scott. Who wrote the great tradition? Novel, the, uh, the great tradition. Who wrote this? The, that was published in the year after our independence, 1948. Um, so one year after our independence, J. Wilson Knight, the wheels, you know the J. Wilson Knight has written the wheels of fire. Okay, T. S. Eliot, A. for Levis, Alan Tate. Hmm. So the great tradition where where he has mentioned uh, uh, the four writers as the great novelist like Joseph Conrad, Jane Austen, and George Eliot. Uh, George Eliot, yeah, George Eliot, Joseph Conrad, Jane Austen. Hmm. And one I cannot remember right now. Uh, okay, I will see in the next slide. So, J. Wilson Knight, T. S. Eliot, A. R. Levis. So, the right option here, that is A. R. Levis is the right option here. Who wrote the great edition? That is A. R. Levis wrote the great edition. 
let's have a look at the slide yeah here uh, uh, henry james yeah henry james so in his work levis fr levis names jane austen jane austen george eliot henry james and joseph conrad so they are the four novel novelists the great english novelists he mentioned them as a great english novelist but in all these eight so there are four there are other four who are the successors of shakespeare one is charles dickens nathan hawthorne harman melville edgar allan poe they are the successors of shakespeare but within his argument he adds ds lorenz to the pantheon of great novelists in english though levis discusses lorenz more in later works okay and levis disparaged that is down uh, down uh, downgraded hmm. the disparage uh, uh, disparage dickens except for his novel hard times so he was only praising hard times uh, so disparage dickens hmm, downgraded dickens dickens except for his novel hard times as lacking the mature standards and interest found in the works of henry james as lacking the mature standards and interests so uh, here he says that dickens was lacking what mature standards was lacking the mature standards and interest and that can be found in the work of but that can be found in the work of henry james so it was told by fr levis now who wrote a novel the great indian novel the great indian novel sashi tharur amitabh ghosh amitabh amit chaudhuri chetan bhagat so this is the great indian novel it was written by sashi tharur it was written by sashi tharur so option number a is the right answer here the great novel let's have a look here the great where mahabharat the theme of mahabharat you will find the great indian novel just satirical novel by sashi tharur that was published in the year 1989 uh, it is a fictional work that takes the story of mahabharata the indian epic and recast and resets in the context of the indian independence movement the work includes numerous puns and allusion to a famous work so there are some puns and allusion to the famous works of based on india that is like rudyard kipling paul scott and em foster okay now move to the next question romeo and juliet romeo and juliet is based on the story by which italian author by which italian author so matt bandello matt 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 bandello virgil john stow is headed with a stow so the option here that is a this matteo bandello is the right option here actually uh, he so shakespeare's principal source principal source main source for the plot of romeo and juliet was the tragic principal source was tragical history of romeo uh, and juliet a long narrative poem that was written by whom arthur brook but arthur brook kis se liya tha Arthur Book, who had based his poem on a French translation of a tale by the Italian writer Matteo Bandello, Matteo Bandello. So Arthur Book has taken from Matteo Bandello, and Shakespeare has taken from Arthur Book's *The Tragical History of Romeo and Juliet*. Okay, so this is the principal source of Shakespeare's uh, *Romeo and Juliet*. Who wrote the Who wrote under the pseudonym of Y Y? The pseudonym is Y Y. Who wrote under the pseudonym? Barton Russell, Jerem K. Jerem, Robert Wilson Lind, Francis Bacon. So this was written by whom? This was written by Robert Wilson Lind. Lind. So Robert Wilson. So option number C is the right answer. Yeah, Robert Wilson Lind. Which of the following works was adapted adapted into uh, into a play by Usha Ganguly? Which of the following works was adapted into film by Usha Ganguly? Sarath Chandras, Chandra uh, Chandra uh, Chandranath. गणदेवता भाई तारासंकर विमल मित्र महानगर और महेश्वरता देवी रुदाली सो हेयर उषा गंगोली फॉलोइंग वर्क्स ऑफ महेश महेश्वरता देवी रुदाली वॉज एडेप्टेड इन टू अ प्ले बाई उषा गंगोली सो दिस इज दिन नंबर डी इज द राइट आंसर हेयर महेश्वरता देवी देवी रुदाली इज द राइट आंसर ओके वाट डज आर्नोल्ड स्कॉलर जिप्सी वाट ड What does Arnold Scholar Gypsy deal with about scholarship, about the gypsies, about the decay of youth and hope, or none of these? So it is the Scholar Gypsy of Matthew Arnold deals with about the decay of youth and hope. So option number C is the right answer here. The novel No Name, the novel No Name that was published in the year eighteen hundred sixty-two was written by whom? Anthony Trollope. Charles Kingsley, 
Wilkie Collins none of these. So the no name, the novel that is published in the year 1962 was written by Wilkie Collins. So option number C is the right answer here. Okay, now move to the next question. Who printed? So this is the last question of today. Okay, I will discuss uh, more question in the next video that is in tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow okay, I will also discuss some MCQ questions. So this is the last question of today. Who printed Shakespeare's sonnets? That is Thomas Thorpe, Ben Johnson, Francis Beaumont, and John Fletcher. Thomas Thorpe, Ben Johnson, Francis Beaumont, and John Fletcher. So it was Thomas Thorpe who printed Shakespeare's sonnet. Thomas Thorpe is the right answer here. So these were all 35 questions that I have discussed. Hmm. So please, if you like the video, do subscribe to house tutorial and stay tuned with house tutorial and tap the bell icon to get more notification and do not forget to share with your friends and hit the like button as well. Thank you. Have a good night.